Contemporary accounts suggest that up to 90 women took part in the rebellion of Easter 1916. The female rebels fought alongside the men in armed combat. However, during the past century, these women were effectively airbrushed from historical accounts of the Rising. This painting, Manon Heron, acknowledges the role they played in the liberation of the state. The GPO is a large and imposing building in Dublin city centre. For the 1916 rebels, it was a symbol of British control in Ireland. It was from here that Podrick Pierce read the proclamation declaring Ireland independent from Britain. Here, the impressive building is painted with its columns in classical style against a blood red sky, symbolising the terrible carnage that was about to befall it. The GPO was utterly destroyed during the Rising. The roof collapsed and the fires that burned smouldered for a long time afterwards. In our painting, the female rebels are portrayed as silhouettes in the military swell uniform entangled in a Celtic interlaced border. This symbolises their struggle for a true Irish identity, free from British rule. The silhouettes were inspired by Harry Clark's illustrations for Ireland's memorial records. Countess Markovich is clearly recognisable in the centre of the painting from a photograph of her at the time in military uniforms, wearing a hat and holding a gun. One woman is dressed in the uniform of Common Man and she is holding a gun that is the symbol for that organisation. Celtic interlacing and bird motifs inspired by the 7th century manuscript, the Book of Kells, forms a border around the central painting of the GPO. There are three statues on the top of the pediment of the GPO, Mercury on the left, Fidelity on the right and Hibernia in the centre. In this painting, Hibernia, the historic personification of Ireland, is seen holding the Irish flag. The Irish harp is incorporated into the Celtic interlacing at the bottom centre of the painting.